Hey everybody, Tim Harridge here. Hope you're doing great. I trust we're all making strides to increase our net worth. You know me, Tim Harridge. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to dive deep into flipping houses. If you're new around here, my channel is all about real estate investing strategies and, and, and strategies to build wealth. So if that sounds interesting, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button below. Join our community of real estate investors. I'm thrilled to have you on board. Now let's get right into today's topic. Identifying profitable properties for flipping. So you've got to pick the right property and there's a lot of parts to that. We'll first talk about location. My wife, Jennifer and I flip houses, still actively in Dallas, Fort Worth. And those houses are typically within 20 to 30 miles from our home. Why? My wife is a very hands-on person when it comes to flipping. She likes to go look at uh, color swatches on, on the uh, walls and uh, different flooring materials and sample different countertop materials. So she needs to be able to go and come back several times in a week. So the location of the home actually means a lot to us because she can't be gone for four hours just to go to a house and look at the paint, right? So we try to keep our flips within 20, 30 minutes of us. Price. Why is price important? In today's market, trends affordability is a huge issue. So if you're keeping your projects below, let's call it the median home price for the neighborhood, it means that more people are going to be wanting to buy that house. It gives you a higher demand rate. It makes it more affordable. It reduces your carry cost. It reduces your down payment. It just helps everything. So I look at price as a function of kind of trying to define the market. We like to be at like 70 to 90% of the median home price for where we're borrowing. And ultimately that a lot of that has to do with market trends because those homes are still selling above list price and then condition. And this is one of those things I talk a lot and we'll talk about it in a minute. We'll talk about rehabbing too many investors that don't have a lot of experience want to try to do heavy rehabs. And I caution against that a heavy rehab can really sink you into uh, change orders. It can sink you into delays. It can, drain your profit with carry cost, uh, your interest, your taxes, your utilities, your insurance, your lawn care, all of these things add up on a daily and weekly basis. So you want to be careful about that. Great ways to find properties. Real estate agents are still a wonderful way to find properties. Um, we use a lot of tools in our businesses, a uh, real eFlow. Um, we use uh, Privy. We use uh, Oh my gosh, property source, uh, and then just the regular old MLS. But, and then of course, uh, Jennifer and I, we do a lot of direct mail advertising and paid per lead, uh, you know, the pay-per-click advertising that where we just pay for the lead instead of pay for the actual pay-per-clicks. And that's just kind of how you can find some properties. When it comes down to budgeting the rehab, this is where a lot of investors make mistakes. I'd say it's probably the most common mistake. I see these repair budgets. It's 15,000 for the kitchen, 15,000 for paint, 15,000 for flooring and then I saw 15,000 for miscellaneous. That's not a repair budget. That's a guess. That's a hope. You really need to be able to break it down line by line. If you're not good at that, there's a ton of training uh, options for that. My friend Roddy at the Rehab Depot teaches a great class on that. Uh, House Hacker is another great tool. You've got to get good at budgeting your renovation cost and you really need to over budget. You need to overestimate with the labor shortages and supply shortages we're experiencing these days. You need to buffer for some unexpected expenses and you got to make sure that your rehab plan matches your exit strategy. So if you're planning to exit at top of the market to a homeowner and you're using a comp that had all new original or all new uh, hand scraped hardwood floors and brand new cabinets and a open kitchen and quartz countertops and Viking appliances, but you're trying to get away with luxury vinyl plank and maybe the black on stainless cheap stove. It's just not apples to apples. So you, either, in this case, you either need to increase your rehab budget to, to allocate for those improvements, or when you get to talking to your sales strategy team, you know, you really need to make sure that you're not shooting for that high number because you're probably not going to get it. And when you talk about sales strategies, use a realtor. If you're not a professional salesperson, if you don't actively negotiate contracts, you will leave money on the table. You will make mistakes and even potentially open yourself up to liability and harm. So um, I, I think disclosure is important. I think keeping track of what you did, the, all the reports you have, and then hiring a true professional that that's what they're there for. That's what they're good at. 
If it's a larger home or maybe the floor plan's a little weird, you definitely want to consider staging. We stage houses all the time still just to establish the flow and the feel, and it really breaks up a choppy house. Another place investors skimp is photos. You've got to take high quality photos. Do not be the investor that goes out there with your iPhone and just takes a couple snips. That's not gonna work. You can't do that. Many, many buyers actually identify a home on Zillow or realtor.com or one of those websites, and then they tell their agent they wanna see at it. See it, and those photos are what's going to dry, draw them in, and then it needs to be backed up by really high quality descriptions. You can't just put kitchen as the caption on the kitchen picture. You have to say fully renovated, state-of-the-art kitchen with Viking appliances and brand new cabinets and quartz countertops. You you really need to, every picture needs to sell itself, not uh, in words and also uh, with quality pictures. So that's kind of on that. I mean, really and truly, I think, you know, flipping houses is all about supply and demand. If you can find the supply, you got to make the supply match the demand and then price it right and you'll be successful. We have a massive under uh, shortage of homes in, the, in America right now. And I, I know that quality inventory properly priced is still moving in today's market. Make sure you're using today's numbers, not yesterday's, and you'll be successful. So uh, get started. Let me know if I can help you. Uh, if you like this video, click, click below, like, subscribe, share, check out my website for more information. We'll see you next time.